Frank. Let's go then, Frank. Again, I'm just going to listen to the music because it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Some folk won't let go of this, and they've got nothing better to do than to poke their noses into other people's business. There's nothing you can do about it, son. I'm doing a good job. I'm working hard. I swear, Mrs. Graves thinks I'll start nicking stuff if she turns her back for a second. This is all right. She's one of the good ones. Yeah, well, she's not exactly honest with her husband about what she gets up to. None of that. You're angry about people judging you. Don't be so fast to judge others. <sighs> I'm sorry, Frank. Keep your gob shut, your nose clean, and your head down. Do you think you can manage that? Gob? Nose, head, got it. And steer clear of that Rachel girl. If I've seen you two making eyes at each other, then so's her dad. And you don't want Sam Baker coming round after you. Now, pass me that socket spanner and we'll see if we can get this wheel back on. Looks like you did get the wheel back on. This is a little bit the arches, isn't it? So let's go follow on. Follow where this little spirit's going. And again, enjoy the music. The pacing and the storytelling in this is absolutely fantastic. So it looks like we're getting into farmland now. What an absolutely amazing bit of music and singing and also just storytelling, like the, the way that this is all paced is absolutely fantastic. I mean, I, I don't know if the light has anything to do with this as well, but it seems to be approaching dusk now. And I guess we're approaching the third area of the farmyard. So let's see what this little light has to say to us in the cornfields. I wonder if it's going to be spooky. And I'm hoping we'll get we'll see a little romance blossoming between Reese and Rachel there. Hello. Can you see the observatory from there? That's over the ridge, just past the windmill. Oh. You want to live near the station in case you need a quick getaway? Something like that. <laughs> so you and Stephen, I'm sensing there's not a lot of love lost there, huh? That's between him, me, and the cows. You're gonna have to explain that one for me. It's nobody else's business. Look, you seem all right to me. You don't want to worry about that lot in the village. Provided I'm left alone, I'm happy. Stephen's the one who likes to be at the center of things. <laughs> no change there, then. <laughs> Francis Appleton. You are a bad man. No wonder your sister won't talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so Frank is, um... Oh dear. Stevie and Liz. Oh dear. So Stevie and Liz, obviously, the younger romance that it should have been. I love Rach. WA and FB. Wendy Appleton and Frank? No. Uh, no, yeah, because I think we've just ascertained Wendy is Stephen's mother and Frank is his uncle. So sister with Wendy. Okay, so we're through the cornfields now. Holiday camp, station, Yorton. So we're moving a little bit further away from Yorton. Um, I wonder if there's anything back on the road. I'm guessing not. So let's have a look around Tipworth and Haverton. So this must be the local farm, of which there is plenty near me. And uh, I've actually got a pig farm near me. And sometimes when the um, wind blows the wrong way, it stinks. It's bloody England. You can't just stop the train, stop people travelling about the place. 
I don't like it, Frank. I don't like it at all. Well, nobody likes it. No sense sweating cobs over it. Folk all riled about it, giving me grief. I didn't stop the bloody trains, did I? And did they give me any warning? No, they bloody didn't. Yesterday, it's all like, keep them calm, Howard, minor disruptions, and today it's all government edicts and not until further notice, and you'll manage. Half the village has vanished. It's a couple of people. It's hardly half the village. Oh, right now. But you forget, I've seen things. I was in the Falklands. I tell you, I got out the old air raid siren to test it this morning. Air raid siren? What on earth are you going to do with one of those? I found it in the station storeroom. Took it home, stuck it under the bed. Thought it might be worth something one day. Oh, damn it. It's all right. It's just a nosebleed. Here, use my Yankee. It's clean. Oh, thanks, Frank, thanks. I've been like a bloody drain all day. Yep, so Howard's... Oh, hello. Are you going to talk to me or not? No. You're still off being a wonderful little uh, cloud of light. So we see how Howard the Station Master starts to show the signs. It's horrific now that we know what it means. You know, all these people are marked for death. Oh gosh. That's certainly one place to keep an engine. I wonder what kind of engine that is. It's a bit mucky in here. One who would live in a house like this? Note, check generator. Now, what is it that's making the noise? I'm guessing it's in the next room. Well, at least he doesn't have a plastic bowl in his sink. Or he's not bothered with it. Let's see. Is it in here? Yes. So there's something through here. Or is it this way? I can't quite tell. There's a lot of lights in here. And also, clock again. Stuck on the same time as everyone else. All these clocks. And notice that all the light seems to be going upstairs, so... Something ominous up there, maybe? Gosh, this really is uh, a house in a needle of a bit of love. I must admit, ever since house hunting, I do, I do look at people's houses now and I'm like, mm, I'm just appraising it. Oh, hello. Can I manipulate you? There we go. How's your sister, Frank? We've not spoken since the funeral. Ah, I see. Well, uh, listen, I, I, I did rather wonder if you might do me a bit of a favour and check in on her, see if she's all right. Dr. Wade, if they drop the bomb, there'd be no left but cockroaches and Wendy Boyles. It's a bit odd, really. There's an old chap, John Coles, regular visitor at Lakeside, went walkabout sometime last night. Now it appears Mrs. Boughton has done the same. Enid? Well, that'd be clever. They amputated her leg last spring. Yes, that's the thing. I've also got a surgery full of people with nosebleeds and headaches. The council are saying influenza, but I've been practicing for 35 years and I'm not convinced. I just wondered if you might pop by and see her. Even if I did, do you really think she'd let me in? Fine. Forget it. I'll see her. Leave it to me. Oh, and Frank, call the hospital and get them to collect all this stuff. It's been eight months. So I presume this is Mary, who is Frank's um, wife, I'm guessing? Who passed away. Um, so there's still a radio somewhere in the vicinity. It is fascinating seeing all the consequences of what's going on in the village. I wonder who comes across as more caring. The doctor or the priest? There it is. It's in the shed? Little man cave? There we go. I'll be I'll be I'll admit I've stopped recording these date these numbers. I think they are kind of inconsequential. I was looking at the dates while I just took a break. The numbers while I took a break and I couldn't figure them out, so let's just listen. The radio telescope in Tower 6 is burned out. The background radiation coming in from the Penrose region is off the scale. It's like mathematics is bending along with the light. Everything is bathed in a strange glow. My face is still numb from the burn. The burn? Is that the burn from the light? That's not good news if it is. Oop, sheets. Sheets like this always remind me of um, the horror film 
Oh, what was it? Sinister? No, not Sinister. The Collector? No, it wasn't the Collector. It was it was made by the same guy who made Insidious and all that. The Conjuring. That's it. And there's a horrible scene with uh, washing and sheets in the um, in the garden. And I I don't know if it's the same film, but there's a, a bit where the sheets kind of get free and fly off and it hits a character in the face like it just hits a shape of a woman in the face oh so creepy and it's right next to the the protagonist so yeah quite creepy right is this up the ladder i think it is here we go i hung up on steven he doesn't understand even if he were here to experience it directly i'm still not sure he would there has to be a way of consolidating, of offering reciprocal amplification to the signal. So she's trying to communicate back with the signal, which is dangerous because what happens if you end up saying something offensive? So he managed to get the transfer to the observatory then? Well, this Catherine woman must have swung it. Now he says they're getting married before they come back. It's typical. Why can't he just wait till he's home? Are you gonna go? Goodness, no. It'll be full of her people. I expect they do things differently. You wanna come in for a cup of tea? Oh, I don't think so. Oh, for Christ's sake, woman, it's been eight months. Won't you just come in and talk? Well, you didn't want to talk when Mary was still alive. You and Charlie Tate out drowning your sorrows when you should have been at home nursing your wife. You can be a nasty old bird, Wendy Boyles. Frank Appleton. You come back here and say that again. Our mother always said you were a bad egg. You'll come a cropper, you mark my words. So brother and sister not having a, having a happy relationship now. As I was about to say before I got cut off, before I move that way, I'm just gonna go backwards and double check that I haven't missed anything. Okay, so I wandered down the back and I found this sort of abandoned building. Oh gosh. Can I make you do something? There we go. Breaker, Breaker 9, call in on 9. This is Lost Cowboy looking for anyone out there. Hello? Breaker 1 9, Breaker Travel In Sherlock. Charlie, you out there? Over. My, my Hello? Family, my my wife that? and kids. You yeah, know perfectly lost. well what you've got to do. I can't do it. Don't ask me to do it. You're asking me to sign their death warrant, my own family. Damn it, don't you think I'm aware of that? I'll still be here when you drop the fucking stuff. No. Don't you lecture me about no. sacrifice, you, you spineless stupid, of a shit. stupid bastard. If you're so full of ideas, you come here and try dealing with it. Tell them the time when we had a choice is over. Tell them to do it. You've got to do it now. So it seems that Stephen is still trying to convince Clive to drop a bomb, I guess, on the village to contain the incident. And Frank, well, it seems that Frank is um, a radio enthusiast, so I can't remember what it's called, but you do get that quite a lot. Um, it's like people who are really a fan of all this kind of old style radio communication there with this little kind of nicknames. What a beautiful spot. So I'm going to explore around a little bit more and then try and pick up the trail because I think there's still something I've missed back over that way. So I'm back around the end of the lake and I found another radio. Here we go. Under the microscope you could see how the light was following the cellular structure of its wings. The neural simplicity of the insects seems to prevent a full-blown infestation so there's none of the hemorrhaging I'm seeing in the birds. But Stephen's wrong. This isn't an attack. It's a byproduct of the attempt to communicate. It's getting smarter. It's learning as it adapts. I'm confident of a breakthrough soon. So while Stephen is running around, panicking and trying to get the bombs to fall, Kate is studying it and trying to communicate back with it. So it sounds there that it's infested insects this time, not just animals. So let's get back to the right path. Okay, so I'm back the other side of the farmhouse. 
near that main house that we first went to. And I found yet another radio here. Let's hit it up. All the power spiked with the last discharge and then went out again. And I could see the Aurora dancing around Tower 6. At the same time, the headache intensified and I think I began to hallucinate. Old and new memories are clashing and tumbling around me. We're on the cusp of a breakthrough. I can feel it. So this is the road that we came down on initially. You can see the field with the tree over there we cut down. So I'm going to check that farmhouse over there. Just to see if I can pick up more of Kate's trail. It's interesting to see Kate through the radios and Stephen through the memories. Which makes me think that Stephen disappeared, but Kate is still here. Unless we are Kate, I, I don't know. Kate, after communicating with the being, it'll be really cute. Hello, Miss Graham. Morning, Frank. You look a little out of breath. What's up? Bloody observatory gates have failed. I came to see if I could borrow a ladder. Bloody hell, there's a 12-foot drop the other side of that wall. I'm old, but I'm not useless. No. Can I borrow the ladder? No one said you were useless. Reese. Hi, Frank. Fetch Graham the ladder, will you, lad? It's round the side of the barn. Will do. And you be careful. I don't want Stephen Appleton coming mithering round here because you've broken your neck. So that's Graham from the beginning. The very first memory we had. But yeah, so I, I think that Stephen has... has, um... has ascended. I don't know what the right term is, really. So the light trail is coming back this side as well. Which makes me think this is a jolly large area to explore. This is honestly like, you know, I played Dear Esther and... Dear Esther I finished in about two hours and that was quite um, indulgent of the surroundings. So this is quite the exploration and I'm sorry I'm not showing you a lot of it but there is really so much to show that I think it's quite exhausting almost. Hi! I'm where were we, you? Jesus! What the bloody hell are you doing? What are you up to? Get out of my way. This is important. You've been with Lizzie. You mess with her, I'll knock your bloody block off. I so. need to track the pattern. It's critical. What are you talking about, Stephen? People are sick. Birds are dying. My cows are dead. Where's Kate? Set up at the tower for all I know. I could recalibrate the radial coordinates on the primary oscillators. If that holds up... Stephen, where's Kate? What's going on? Just keep out of my way. Hmm. Stephen's seems to be breaking down as well. I can hear a phone somewhere. So there's still this barn house to go and check. We're skirting in between the farm. But where is this phone? It sounds like it's coming from up here. Can I get through here? I presume so. No, I can't. How am I going to get up there then? So this is where all of Frank's cows died. If I could activate this... You never mentioned anything about them sickening yesterday. I checked them last night on the way back and they were fine. I woke up this morning and the whole lot had gone. Tell me, Charlie, have you heard any birds today? Well, I've not really been paying any attention. That sister of mine reckons they're dropping out the sky all round the region. And Dr. Wade reckons there's sick folk all over the village. Meg said not to bother trying to get deliveries out. Set the quarantine in the whole valley. I reckon it's best we just sit it out. It'll all come right, Frank. This'll all come right? Yeah, right. I am sorry about your cows, Frank. But when things settle down, they'll see you all right. There's got to be provision for this sort of thing. You want to listen to the radio more? Things don't seem like they're settling down at all. I tell you, Charlie, something big is happening. He's not wrong. It's that West Country farmer intuition. There's a windmill over there. See, I guess that's why you can hear nothing but flies in here, is that uh, they're swarming over where the dead cows used to be. Right, where should we head out to next? So we've come over from that direction. And there was that little bit around the back that I missed out on. And then there's the, 
the ring phone up there, but I have a feeling I have to go round the back there. And there's the little light telling us where to go. So let's just check I haven't missed anything before we follow this little guy here. You knew. Wade called me in about six weeks after, once he thought I could cope with no end. Can I ever repay you for what you did? She was a good woman, Frank. The best. You should come back to church. Back to the community. You're missed. I hate him, Father. I can't get down on my knees and pretend otherwise. And I don't understand why you don't hate him, too. I try my hardest not to, Frank. It goes against the job description somewhat. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. We have to trust him. Even when his methods are hidden from view. Maybe see you on Sunday. Well, I'm glad I made the journey all the way up here. So, um, this is back up behind the lake. I don't know if you saw the flicker of light go up here. Looks like a bunch of daisies left behind. So Frank knew that the father administered a high dose of morphine to his wife Mary, which obviously killed her, but given how long her suffering was, it seems like Frank was actually quite grateful. It's still a tough decision to go through. Certainly one you don't take lightly, but when you're that long with someone and you see them in such a condition of pain and suffering, who knows what lengths you'll go to. So let's head back now and see where the path takes us. I reckon it's going to take us back to the barns on the other side. So I'm back round near the barns and they seem to have picked up the trail again. Frank! Frank, for God's sake, stop! Keep back, you bastard. I know what you've done. Where's Lizzie? Where is she? I've got to find her. You stay away. Someone's got to warn them. Someone's got to stop it. You can't stop it. You have to understand. You hate me, I get that. But if we don't do this, it's not just the valley, it's everything, Frank. It's all gone. You're talking bollocks. You can't stop it! Jesus! You take one step closer, I'll bash your bloody skull in, I swear to God. All right, all right, I'm going. But if you see Lizzie, tell her to get out. There's still time. Please, Frank, for her, not me. If you're that bloody caring, you can save her yourself. Don't you get it? I have to stay. Someone has to be here to confirm that everyone is dead. Wow. So Frank drawing a gun on his own nephew there. And Stephen oddly still concerned for Lizzie. So I wonder if you know you should believe the rumours that they were carrying on together. If he was being unfaithful on Kate. Oh gosh, there's that air raid, air raid siren. Now I wonder if that's unlocked the gate, maybe. Well, the light's waiting for us over in the direction of the gate, so I guess we'll see. In the meantime, I, the, the sounds, yeah, there's another radio over here. Got the telescope up and running again, but the pattern has burnt itself onto the lens. It's soaking up light and radiation but not routing it anywhere, so I can only guess that it's using it as an energy source in its attempts to communicate. It needs more power. I wonder if I could boost the reception by using multiple towers. So Kate's feeding power to this entity, so is she responsible for nurturing it? I mean, that would kind of work with the whole idea of women nurturing and men trying to destroy, you know, if you've fall into that old stereotype. I wonder actually if the air raid siren's actually coming from this windmill over here. I think I spotted a gate. Oh, hello. So I decided- oh, Thanks Frank, let's get it out of the way. I don't know what happened, it just died on me. Give it another go. Oh, I only just put petrol in it as well. Robert's taken the other car into town. I wish he'd get back. He promised me that he'd be back this morning. You think he's off on another bender? Oh, I can't police him all the time, Frank. He's not a child. What's going on, Lizzie? Nothing. You're seeing Stephen again, aren't you? You two can't keep pithering on like this. If Robert hasn't already worked it out, he soon will. Oh, not if he carries on drinking the way he is. 
pardon my French, but bloody shitting thing, why won't it start? Come on, I'll give you a lift. So typical, the, uh, well, I'm glad we see this key scene, because now we are definitely going back towards the air raid signal on the windmill. So we're here at the windmill. I guess let's conclude Frank's bit then. My name is Frank Jacob Appleton. And if you're listening to this, then maybe Stephen was right. And by sending the planes, he stopped it all getting worse. It's a beautiful morning. I wasn't there when Mary died. I was too scared. So I went to the pub instead. What will be, will be, Frank, she said. And I just want you to face it with me. And I didn't. But I will now. I will face it with you now, Mary. They're coming. So they did send planes. But how does that explain why there's no damage? Is this place stuck in time? Did the aliens stop it all? God, I genuinely feel so sad when he was saying how he went to the pub instead of helping Mary when she needed him the most. I'm, gen I'm genuinely tearing up here. That's so sad. And I bet that's the guilt that he carries with him for the rest of his life. Until, well... I guess the planes must have dropped bombs and killed him, and then it seems, you know, when anyone dies here, they ascend or... disappear. So when... So I'm guessing they did send planes, but... Why is there no damage? Is the, the thing we need to figure out next. Oh god, I'm genuinely goosebumpy from from that bit and, and tearing up a bit cuz I don't know. Stories like that always hit a nerve with me. I like the story between Frank and Mary. Because it is such a tough subject to talk about, especially when you love someone so much, but you see them suffering so much, but then can you really be with there with them at the end? But now I guess we're here to find out, well, I want to find out what happened to Kate, who are next, Lizzie. Oh wow, okay. So I guess we're going to find out if Lizzie did have anything to do with Stephen when they were both married to both Robert and Kate. <laughs> 